started here this evening. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, going to try a couple things tonight and um, see if it makes things a little bit easier on us. So a couple things that I want to try this evening. First of all, uh, I'll probably keep everybody on mute a little bit more um, just to try and keep down some of the uh, the background noise, uh, especially to the extent when I'm talking and things like that, I'll probably just kind of keep everybody on mute. Uh, when I ask somebody to, to read, I might mute everybody else, um, but we're going to still be able to interact, but I think I might just kind of have it on mute a little bit more often, see if we can make sure we can hear each other. Um, the other thing I ask is to the extent that you have a question or you have a comment, I would ask if you would just say your name. I think that might be a good way to um, to kind of keep things a little bit more orderly. Just to the extent that you have a question or you have a comment or you want to say something, uh, just say your name. And then that way I'll try to see if I can get through everybody before we move on to the next point. Everybody with me? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, then let's go ahead and get started here. Before we uh, get going, we're going to just pray. That's it. This is All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. All participants are muted. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, God, with our heads bowed and with our hearts humbled. And Lord, we simply say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to be able to come out and be with each other in, in this evening, God, knowing that we wish that we could come out and be spirit or be physically connected, Lord, knowing that we are instead spiritually connected, God. We thank you. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity, God, because we understand that. Not every country, not every person in this world is able to come together freely and learn about your word. We are thankful for that wonderful blessing. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that you would bless us on tonight, bless us to know your word, to understand your word, to get a deeper dive into your word. God, we say thank you, God, for this great opportunity to get a chance to know you a little bit better, Lord, through the way that you revealed yourself in your word. We ask you, Lord, to bless all those who are hurting, all those who are sick and shut in, all those who are going through difficulty on tonight, those who have lost loved ones, those who are those who are sick themselves, Lord, those who are just going through financial difficulties and all other types of pain, especially those that are caused by this pandemic, God. We understand, Lord, that you are in control, and so we continue to give you all glory, honor, and praise, God, and we will fall lockstep into your will, God. Whatever your will is, Lord, we ask for it to be done. And we ask you, Lord, to just continue to bless us and protect us and make our feet like hinds feet, God. Keep us out of trouble and keep us away from danger. God, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And God, if we had a thousand tongues, we could not thank you enough, God. We just say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> All participants are unmuted. Amen. Oh, yeah. So we're, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, we have been looking. We have been looking at. Uh, actually, no. Before we do that, before we do that, uh, before we get into this here, actually, I, let me just make one quick announcement. Um, on this coming Saturday, Saturday at ten a.m. So Saturday at ten a.m. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. Saturday at 10 a.m. we'll be having a, a drive-up church service, and um, when we have that service, you know, you'll be able to come on up to the church, you'll be able to stay in your cars, um, but we'll be able to at least enjoy one another, and we thank the Lord for that opportunity. Um, we will be running the, uh, the church vans, and so we just ask that if you are somebody who uh, normally would get on the van, make sure that you get in contact with the van driver uh, just so we know. And, and the sooner you can do that, the better, just so we know how to uh, plot out going to get everyone. Uh, we do not plan on filling the vans up, so we may have to make more than one trip. 
So we want to make sure that if you are interested in, in coming out and you need to get on the van, please let us know as soon as possible. And you can call uh, your van driver and we'll get everything figured out and put together. Um, otherwise, we again, we look forward to it. We're going to have some a good time. We'll be able to connect with, with each other, even if it's from afar. We thank the Lord for an opportunity to be able to connect on Saturday morning. So again, that's Saturday at 10 o'clock. Uh, come on out to the church. We'll be uh, right there in the parking lot. And we're going to have uh, some drive-up church service uh, on Saturday at 10 a.m. All participants are unmuted. Amen. All right. So we'll get one more time. We ask again as, uh, as we go through here tonight, if you are not talking, please put your phone on mute. It'll help to uh, keep down some of the ambient noise. Now, this evening, we are going to get into, or continue to get into, uh, the Eighth Commandment. And so on last week, when we, when we came together, we started looking at this Eighth Commandment, which is, Thou shalt not steal. And we had an, an excellent time, I think, on last week, getting into the Word of God and helping, the, you know, God helping us to understand exactly what he meant by this commandment. All participants are muted. Helped us to understand exactly what he meant by this commandment, and we thank the Lord for for that on last week. Now, a couple of things we want to try and just get to before we get into uh, anything new today, and that's just talking about a couple of things that we covered on last week. We understand that it says uh, in the commandment, in our eighth commandment, uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse number 15, Exodus chapter 20, verse number 15, it says, thou shalt not steal. And um, this is, again, one of those interesting ones, because many times when we get to uh, this commandment, especially what we tend to say to ourselves is, well, you know, I don't go to stores and I don't just, you know, pocket, uh, uh, you know, merchandise, right? I don't uh, I haven't robbed a bank. I don't have a rap sheet. So we ultimately automatically think that this does not apply to us, but it really does both on the negative side as far as what we should not do. And also, I think what we'll see as well tonight on the positive side of things we should try and do um, that is related to this this commandment. Um, you know, it, it was something very interesting to me. I started thinking about something this week that was an interesting occurrence. You know, I go to uh, some of these continuing education classes sometimes uh, for for my CPA. And uh, what you find about these many of these big time companies now is they have gotten to a place where when it comes to cybersecurity and keeping um, everyone's uh, uh, information safe and a lot of their intellectual property safe, many of them uh, have pivoted and they are no longer simply thinking to themselves, how do we keep from getting hacked or how do we keep from somebody stealing this information, and they've actually gotten to the place where they've said to themselves, not only is it, it's, is it important to try and not get hacked and not have anything stolen, but really they've stopped thinking about if this happens and start they've started to think about when this happens. And uh, they've really pivoted their mindset. It just kind of shows you really where we are in society where uh, companies, and, and honestly not just big companies, but even individuals, right? We say to ourselves that there is a good chance at some point down the line that somebody's going to attempt to take what is not theirs. And that means they're going to try to take what is what is mine, what's been given to me by God. And uh, and I think that's a sad, a sad commentary, but it unfortunately is where we are in society. Um, and what some of the things we talked about on last week, you know, was not just purely taking uh, personal information, but really taking anything that belongs to somebody else. Um, it, it's, it's a time where ultimately you looked and you've seen something that you want, that's something that belongs to somebody else and you decide you're going to take it. And I think what's interesting about this commandment and really the last three commandments, i.e., um, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie or bear false witness and, uh, and you should not covet, you know, really in a lot of ways, all three of those, of those, uh, commandments really are interconnected. Um, when you decide that you're going to steal, usually there's some level of, of uh, deception that goes along with that, right? Some level of lying that goes along with your theft. And many times when you've coveted, 
usually that's just the first thought that you have before you go and steal something from somebody by somebody and or lie to somebody. So I think it's interesting to see, especially these last three uh, commandments, because really um, they are very, very much so connected. Um, so what we talked about last week, it's not just purely taking personal property. It's also swindling. It's also tricking people out of their property, even tricking people out of their labor. I don't know if you remember this from last time, but we talked about in the book of James where it talks about how uh, many times people would go and work in the fields of those who, who had land. And usually it was a poorer person uh, working for somebody who was very well off. And many times what they would do is they would go and hire somebody to come in and do the work. And then when the work was done, they refused to pay them. And so we found out, obviously, that that is stealing. Um, on the other side of that, we also found where, you know, if you whenever you decide that you're going to go to work and you're going to clock in, but you're not going to do the work that you've been paid to do or that you're being paid to do, that also is stealing. So we have to understand that when we look at this, uh, this commandment, it's broad. There's a lot that's covered in this commandment. And um, what we have to say to ourselves here is don't just simply write it off. We can't just simply say to ourselves, well, that's not me, because if you do, you'll be deceiving yourself. Because in some way, shape or form, um, I think we've all broken this commandment as we have all the other ones. But we thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy. And we thank the Lord for opportunities like this for us to be able to really dive deep into his word and realize maybe we have messed up a little bit and we know we need to start to do some things differently. So I'm going to unmute you here in a second, and I want to see if anybody's got any comments on anything before we uh, before we really get started uh, this evening. When I unmute, just uh, feel free to just say All your name. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. Feel free to just say your name if you have a comment uh, about what we looked at last week before we jump into some of the lesson this week. All participants are unmuted. My apologies. And you can say your name now. I apologize. I still had you on mute. If anybody has anything they'd like to say, you can say your name and we'll see if we can get to you. Everybody's good for this evening? Amen. All right. Well, we're going to jump right in here then. If you remember on last week, what we did is we looked at uh, the Heidelberg Catechism. And so, you know, just again, just very, very briefly, you know, really what this is, it's, it's a essentially a, uh, a commentary essentially on the scriptures. It, it's, it's various statements of faith and various statements of understanding as to what the Bible is saying and what it means by uh, a variety of scriptures within the Bible. And, um, you know, it's mainly used again by the Presbyterian Church. We usually don't use it uh, as far as the Baptist Church in the same kind of way. But I think when it comes down to these commandments, I think it's interesting. I think it has some pretty good commentary on these commandments. And so, you know, I would just encourage you to feel free to go and you can look it up online. Uh, but it gives you some pretty good commentary, I think, on what God meant when he handed these commandments down. And uh, if you remember from last week, what we did is we were looking at that Heidelberg Catechism. Uh, we're going to question number, I think it's 110. It's Lord's Day 42, if you happen to be looking at it. Um, and it says... What does God forbid in the Eighth Commandment? And what we started talking about last week is God forbids not only outright theft and robbery punishable by law, but in God's sight, theft also includes all scheming and swindling in order to get our neighbor's goods for ourselves, whether by force or means that appear legitimate, such as inaccurate measurements or weight size, uh, uh, inaccurate measurements of weight, size, or volume fraudulent merchandising, counterfeit money, excessive interest, or any other means forbidden by God. In addition, God forbids all greed and pointless squandering of his gifts. And then we, we also then found that it then goes on to say, here are some things that God does expect us to do in relation to this commandment. And we talked about this a couple times over the last couple weeks, that every time you read one of the Ten Commandments, uh, you see where it says a thou shalt not. It means that if you just flip that thing to the other side of the coin, it tells you what you should do. 
And the same thing where it says that you shall, i.e. you shall honor your father and your mother. Then on the other side of that, you understand what it means uh, that you should uh, that you should not do, right? And so as we look at this commandment, it's the same thing. Thou shalt not steal. But then it also goes and tells us that if we're not supposed to steal, then there's, there's some stuff that we probably should do, right? And so here in uh, in um, the next part of the Heidelberg Catechism, it says, what does God require of you in this commandment? And the answer here is is powerful. It says that I do whatever I can for my neighbor's good, that I treat others as I would like them to treat me, and that I work faithfully so that I may share with those in need. The opposite of stealing from those who are disadvantaged is giving to those who are disadvantaged. And so we're going to get into a little bit of that tonight as well. Amen. So let's jump into this thing. So if uh, everybody would turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter number 12. Luke chapter number 12. And we are going to look at verses starting at verse number 15. We'll probably go to verse 21 or so. So Luke chapter number 12, starting at verse number 15. And what we want to look at here is we want to look at a little bit, think about the concept of greed. And the reason this is important to think about is because in reality, what tends to happen when you're thinking about stealing something from someone else, right? Greed tends to be what you feel sort of in your mind and in your heart before you actually take action, right? You're not content with what God has already given to you. Uh, You want somebody else's stuff, right? Which is that coveting, right? And you want it simply because you want it, right? You want it simply because you want it. Um, And so, you know, there is this concept of greed. So uh, Luke chapter number 12, starting at verse number 15, it says this. It says, and he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, uh, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul? Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. God didn't like that. Verse number 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm going to see, I'm going to ask, um, let me see here, Deacon Lewis, what do you think about that passage, Deacon? Well, I think that it's okay to honestly accumulate we say finance, and but but you see your neighbor in need it, you ought to be a giving person to share it, uh, it to help them in their need. You know, you, you may not have to take care of them, but you can help them along the way. So, uh, right off the bat, that's what I'm saying. Hey, Amen. I, I like that. You know, I like that. And, and here's what I would also go along with that. I would say you're right. And I think what God is ultimately getting to here as well is when I bless you, right? When I give you more than what you need, right? Your first thought as a child of God should not be, man, God gave me everything I need. I'm just going to take everything I got or more than what I need. I'm going to take everything I got. I'm going to hide it. I'm going to hold it. And I'm just going to keep it all for myself, right? 
what he's ultimately saying here is if I gave you that much more, right? This was an overabundance, right? Well, well above what this what this man would ever need. And he decided, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of giving some of this away, I'm going to spend money and time and effort, and I'm just going to build bigger barns so I can keep everything that I have, right? And so what God is ultimately telling us here is uh, when, when we're blessed, you know, especially when we're blessed beyond measure, you know, we should be willing to share those blessings with somebody else. We shouldn't be thinking to, um, to ourselves, I'm just going to get it and take it and hide it all and keep it all to myself. Um, certainly God would have us to be, to be smart and to be frugal, to be good stewards with what he gives us. But when we know that we have an overabundance and just like Deke said, we know that there are those around us who are hurting you know, we, our heart should be going out to them. It should not all, it should not be an all about me moment. Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody else have any, uh, any, um, thoughts on that one? Huh? Let's keep on keeping on. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hold on, hold on one second. Sister James, we can barely hear you. All right, try again. I, I was saying that it would have been a waste anyway if God had me with him because when we take stuff and store up from it no way it don't last so just as well well I'm like maybe that's one absolutely absolutely you know uh just just to repeat it I don't know if everybody can hear but what she was saying was you know the way that God handled it was the best way because all that was gonna happen was he was gonna take all that food Throw it in the barn, and it most likely would have spoiled anyway. It wouldn't have been any good for anybody anyway. In his attempts to uh, to keep it all for himself, he probably would have lost a bunch of it anyhow. And, and I think that's definitely the case. I, I think uh, whether you're talking about it from the standpoint of money, or you're talking about it from the standpoint of of goods, right, and fruits and vegetables and food. Um, you know, God is not pleased with that kind of attitude, right? Um, he's not saying that you have to just go and just give away everything that you have, right? But he's just saying that when he blesses you with an abundance and you know that there are those around you who are hurting, your heart should go out to them. Any other comments on that one? All right. We're going to keep on keeping on. This is all participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. All participants are unmuted. I heard, sorry, I heard somebody right the, right the tail in there. Who, who was that? Uh, this is Sister Robinson. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you know, not, only, not only is the unwillingness to share, they won't even spend it on themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the, that's the critical part. We had a man in Ohio and he um, died um, uh, in the winter because of the he couldn't pay the electric bill, and then they went in and found millions of dollars in the mattress. Mm. And it's just uh, sad that they wanted to spend it on themselves, and that's the, that's the really bad part, I think, is. That's why they hoard. That is terrible. Yeah, I think God would ultimately have us to look at look at the reason, right? Why has God blessed me with so much, right? What does he really want me to do with it? What what does God do, right? What does he do with his wonderful and abundant gifts, right? He constantly gives them to us, even though we don't deserve it, even though we we shouldn't have it by any uh, means of our merit, but he gives it to us anyway because he knows that we need it, right? Everything from the food that we have, the clothes on our backs, all the way to just his love and affection. We don't deserve to be loved, but we are. Yeah. And so we have to say to ourselves, you know, what would God have me to do with it? All right, let's keep on keeping on. So one other thing here that we want to sort of capture is um, when we look at this Eighth Commandment, 
All participants are muted. When you look at this Eighth Commandment, it also speaks to being careful about an attitude of somebody else will always take care of this, right? Or somebody else will provide for this, or it doesn't matter, right? This, this person has a bunch of money, so they won't miss any of it, that sort of thing. We have to understand that, um, that you know, to the extent that we can do our part, then we should do our part. Um, it, it's ultimately, it's natural uh, for us to want, right? It's natural for us to want certain things, to want better lives for ourselves, even the nicer car, the house, or, you know, whatever it might be. It's okay, right, to want some of those things. The issue becomes, how do you get those things, right? Um, <clears throat> God has set up a system for us to be able to work hard, right, for the things that we that we desire, uh, to make smart choices with our money and to be good stewards of what he's given to us. And he's made, you know, these, these, uh, these avenues, right, for us to be able to get the things that we want. And I believe that when we are faithful in we being willing to work and faithful in being willing to be good stewards, that God blesses those things. And and all I can say is in my own life, I know I've seen that. I've seen where there were times where I was not being a good steward and I seen I just kept digging the hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, but when I started to make sure that I was doing things properly, saving where I should, giving God what was supposed to be his, suddenly everything changed. And so I would just give uh, that testimony to anybody out there who is hurting and anybody out there who's struggling with your finances. Make sure that God has his and make sure you're looking at it and asking yourself, are you truly being a good steward with, uh, you know, with what he has given you? Um, Second Thessalonians 3 and 10 is that famous verse, right? Um we understand that if anyone is not willing to work, then it says, let him not eat. All participants are unmuted. Oh. You know, so this concept here that, that I think that uh, we need to see in this, in this portion of our, of our study of this, uh, of this commandment, is we have to understand that we it's not right for us to simply sit there and say, well, we can just kind of coast. Everybody else can work and we can coast, right? Listen, certainly no problems. We know that sometimes things happen. Um, I'm going to go back and mute you one more time. All participants are muted. We understand that sometimes things happen, right? We understand that sometimes, um, you know, we find ourselves down on our luck and we find ourselves in in, in difficulty and in dire straits and we need help and we need funding and we need people who will care for us. And listen, we've all been to that place. I think all of us can say at some point we needed somebody's help and there's nothing wrong with that. The issue more so becomes when you get to the place where you're back on your feet or you get to the place where you can do and help for yourself, right? Then that's what you should do. And not only should you do that, but you should also look for opportunities to help somebody else. If, if somebody's helped you in your time of need, then you should be looking at help, trying to help somebody else. And and that's ultimately what Paul was saying here is don't let folk just kind of coast, right? If they are able to work, they should, right? If they are able to provide for themselves, they are able to, to, to give to the greater good and give to the church, then they should. And if they are not willing to do those things, then we shouldn't just sit around and just let them not do those things. Um, if they're not willing to work, then they should not be able to eat. If they're not willing to put in for the greater good, then why do they always expect necessarily to be able to uh, partake in the greater good? All participants are unmuted. Anybody have any uh, comments on that one? That's right. All right. Any other comments? I'm gonna ask this question then, since since we're you know since we're kind of just going through this thing, I would again ask again for anybody who has your phone, if you had, if you could put it on mute, Sister, I think it might be Sister Robinson. I think it might be that might be coming from you, maybe. All right. Thank you very much. So um, what I would say here is that to the extent 
to the extent that um, we look at these 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 programs, for example, right, that are set up to be able to help people, right? Um, uh, you know, food stamps and WIC and Social Security and all those things. Um, I am a, a wholehearted supporter, you know, of all those things. I've been in a situation where I've been in subsidized housing before. Um, I know what it ultimately means to need and to be in a place of want. Um, but I think even from even from those programs, right? I think what we have to say to ourselves is the best way for us to be able to to uh, to handle those programs is to the extent that we need to be on them. Certainly, do what you need to do, but look at it as a time uh, to help you to get to where you need to be. And and you know, not only is it is it dangerous from the standpoint of um, of thinking that everything is going to be okay and is always going to be another check. It's literally dangerous because there are people even now at high levels in the government who would like to cut some of those subsidies, right? Who would like to kind of cut some of those things and, and pull those things. And I think that God is really telling us here that, you know, we should be able to do our absolute best when we can to stand on our own two feet. Um, because if you're constantly um, dependent, you know, on somebody else, then there's always a chance that that rugs will get pulled out from under you. Yes. Deacon Lewis. Yes, sir. And I agree. I agree to the point, but I got a flip side to that. Mm -hmm. Some, all of us is not, all of us don't and have not, and will always be in this society, maybe because of education or what type of jobs they pay because they pay a certain minimum of wages for that. Mm -hmm. And some is able to do much more, some do less, but they are giving to, they're contributing when they pay a tax. Yep. You've got a lot of retired people, and they've got some senior years, even in their additional pension funds and Social Security, only take them to a certain level. That's right. But the level all, the level all most have them in a poverty area. Mm -hmm. So, with and I'm hoping that the government don't get to the point, but I know God seems to know everything. But he said his grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. He'll take a little bit and make much out of it. And he'll never run out. See? So, but you got folks that, like you say, if it don't work, he don't eat. See? And later on that 11 verse, they tell you, you got some business, business body. They're working, but they're not working like they should. They, they ride them like out of minds and... and Living in sin, doing all kind of other crazy stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But those people that you know, they're giving, they're working, they're giving to help folks. Maybe at that time, so now they need help, and they already don't contribute to something, and the government should help them as well. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I hope you know, and I hope everybody's oh. absolutely. Oh. I hope everybody's getting me too. Now, I'm not saying if you're on a program, if you have something that you know that you're being blessed with from the government that you're in bad shape, or you've done something wrong. What I'm saying is if you know that you have more, right? If you know that, for example, you've got plenty of money saved, saved up and you're living a comfortable and good life, right? Um, then we should make sure that, uh, that we're looking at ourselves, looking at our situation and make sure we're doing the right thing, right? With the, with the blessings that God has given to us. And if you're in a position where, uh, you don't have to be on the program, right? Or, you know, you're not in a position where, just like you said, it's not putting you in a place of poverty. Um, if you're in a position where, you know, you're in good shape, then, you know, we should think about whether or not you really want to continue to put that check as being your most, you know, being something that you depend on or something that you kind of count on, right? Because you just never know what's going to happen. For example, you know, in, in Ephesians 4 and 28, uh, Paul instructed, as he said, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. And that's Ephesians 4 and 28. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12, it says, Aspire to live quietly and mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
So when we think about this thing about, again, just being careful about this commandment of not stealing, we just have to understand that this thing is multifaceted, right? And there are a lot of different levels to this. And uh, we have to say to ourselves, you know, is this something that I've done? Is this something I'm doing? And just constantly be checking ourselves, just like every other commandment. We need to constantly be be asking the Lord to clean us up, right? If there are things that we are doing that are not pleasing to him, remove those things and bless us to be more and more like him. Amen? Amen. So now, Amen. now we have looked at some of the things that we should not do. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that we should do. So very, very quickly here in summary, back to the catechism, it says that, uh, that I do what I can for my neighbor's good, that I treat others as I would like them to treat me, and that I work faithfully so I can share with those in need. Part of the reason, right, that we put in work and part of the reason that we do uh, what we do on a daily basis, at least I know I do. I know some some folk here are probably retired and, and chilling out now, but part of the reason that I do what I do, and I'm sure part of the reason that you did, even if you're not working now, what you did for the years that you did is not simply to to have money and just kind of hold it and, and store it away. But I mean, I like being able to help people, right? I mean, it makes me feel good and it makes me feel uh, feel connected to God, right? When I know I can help somebody who's in need and I've been in need, I've been in that place. And so I thank the Lord every time I get an opportunity to be able to help somebody who's in that place. You know, and one of the things that I think is is very, um, very powerful, and I think you see it most, really you see it throughout the commandments, but I think especially in this commandment you see it, right, is uh, is God is, is, is telling us what Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 12, therefore all things uh, whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, mm-hmm. for this is the law and the prophets. Amen? Mm-hmm. Amen. So what is that, right? What what do we call that 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 scripture there? And I think um, uh, I think that's the treat with Sister Maxine Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, treat people the way you want to be treated. Absolutely. So that what what rule is that? What do we call that? The golden no. rule, right? golden rule right to treat others as you would as you would like to be treated right and i think that's a big part of this commandment right i mean when you stop and say to yourself well you know even the government right you say okay i'm gonna I'm just you know lie on this paperwork or i'm gonna lie on my taxes and yeah i'm gonna get an extra hundred dollars from the government right do you what if you, what if you stopped and said to yourself well what if, how would i feel Right. If somebody lied to me and got an extra hundred dollars out of me. Right. No matter what you think about the government. Right. It, it kind of makes you stop and think about what you're going to do before you do it, especially from the standpoint of taking something that's not yours. Hey, that's kind of hard because it's just I mean, God, God's commandments different from the law of the land. <laughs> it's kind of hard, but. You gotta do it. Yeah, and, and and remember this now. Remember they're talking about taxes one day, right? Saying, you know, Jesus, do we need to pay our taxes or what? And what he said? Yeah, give up to Caesar, the render them to Caesar. That's right. God. That's right. Amen. Amen. So that tells us that you know we should be following the laws of the land to the extent that they do not conflict with the laws of God. Everybody turn your Bibles to Galatians 6. We're going to look at verses uh, 7 through 10. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10. This is some of my, my favorite verses in here. Galatians 6, verses 7 to 10. Let's see if we can get somebody to uh, to read for us here this evening. Who do we got? 
Uh, Deacon Newman, you on? Deacon Newman, you with us? All right, let's see who else we got. Hello. Oh, there you go. Hey, Deke. Hello. Yes, sir. We got you. Hello. Yes, sir. We got you, Deke. You want you want to okay. read for us there? Uh, Galatians six verses uh, seven to ten for us. Okay, seven through ten. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall all of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do not good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. Amen. And that verse, especially verse number 10, as we have that opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. I love this section of scripture because what it's really trying to tell us here is for those who don't want to do it God's way, be not deceived. God is not mocked, right? You think you're getting away with it, but you aren't getting away with it. Be not deceived. But it also tells us on the other side of that, right, for those who are doing their best, right, understand that God is watching and don't grow weary yeah. of well-doing, right? You know, mm -hmm. sometimes what happens to us, and this is maybe this is just me, but sometimes what happens to us is we do our best to go out of our way to help somebody, right? And they are not necessarily appreciative of it. Amen. Um, you know, uh, they, you know, either they say they're going to pay you back or they don't pay you back or, you know, you, uh, you, you know, you, you go and go out of your way and really go to do something that, that has uh, really put you out, you know, and really kind of put you in a bad way or kind of just at least kind of puts you in a place where it strains you a little bit. And, um, you know, and they seem to almost feel as if they were just sort of entitled to it. Right. Um, now what we have to remember here though, is at the end of the day, we shouldn't get, let that get us down. Right. Because, you know, you're really not doing it for that person. You're doing it for God. You're doing it because God would have you to do it. And when you keep your mind on that, then you don't, you know, you're not so worried about it when people don't, uh, don't do what you would expect for them to do. And then what ends up happening, the, you know, and I, again, I'm personal witness of this is uh, you will reap. Amen. You'll reap the, the, the good harvest of the seed that you planted. If you faint not right. In other words, God will do some Amen. good things for you. You ain't got to worry about the person who, who won't do for you, but God will do some great things Amen. for you. And that's what we should look for. And that's what we should, we should uh, work for. That's what we should expect. And, uh, and don't get too down, right, when uh, when we try to do well, and uh, sometimes our well is looked on badly. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's like part of storing your treasures in heaven. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, see you, you, you're looking for the rewards here on earth, all of it on earth, and, and you should be doing it for God. Your heart be at in heaven. You're doing it for God. And that's where your treasure will be there waiting for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because we, uh, we sang that song, let the work we do be for real. See, the work you're doing is you're working because God equipped you to do that work. So don't deny God what he's saying and go ahead and do what he wants you to do. Amen. Amen. You know. Amen. And I think, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, feel free. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You got it. I, I was just saying, and also, it's just like this scripture. We just came out of um, Luke with it. Somebody took a man that stored all this food in the barn. And God, Jesus told me that foolish man. Mm -hmm. This night, that soul required of me. You know? Right. 
you know, ain't thinking about his soul. He was thinking natural food stuff, natural material stuff, you know? Absolutely. That's that's very good. That's very good. That, that's a very good point. Um, and if we're not careful, we can get caught up in that, right? I mean, right. Es- especially in this country, you know, we we have so much. And, and I know, you know, I know that you know sometimes we're hurting, and I know that certainly there are times where where uh, where we feel like we ain't got much. But um, we we really are blessed in a lot of ways, and I think that in this society, especially. Um, we're sort of built on the back of our economy is built on the back of the consumer. In other words, when the consumer is not buying, our economy slows down severely. And we can see that's what's happening now, right? There are a lot of lawmakers, a lot of people who are, who are very afraid about what's going to happen to our economy because, you know, people aren't buying, right? They're not out there buying cars, they're not going to movies, they're not going on vacations, all those things. And so I'm saying all that to say, um, in this society especially, we, we tend to have this uh, this message that comes across to us constantly that, you know, we need this new thing or we need to, you know, money to buy that new thing. And, you know, these things, right, the accumulation of these things is what gives us worth. But as we talked about a little earlier, life is about more than just simply gathering things. Um, our Our worth. The way, the way that we get worth, the way that we look at ourselves and see that we are worth something and see that we are somebody is because we are made in the image of God and we are loved by God. And when you make sure that that is the focus of the way that you see your own self-worth, you know, nobody else can, can make you uh, hooked on buying stuff and nobody can put you down in a way so that you feel like you are worth less because you know that God loves you. And because he loves you, that's all yeah. that matters. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So yeah. one of the concepts I want to get at here is, you know, let me just make something clear as well. So possessions ultimately in and of themselves, right, are not bad, right? Having things, being blessed with money and being blessed with, you know, a, a comfortable living, those things aren't bad. It's what you do with them, right? Because if you think about it. Amen. Yeah. As if you think about it, remember now when, when, um, the Israelites were about to cross over into the promised land, right? The whole point of the promised Mm -hmm. land was this possession, right? It was what God was giving to them. And specifically, he motivated them and helped them to understand just how wonderful a blessing it is. Because he said, this land that I'm about to give you, right? It's flowing with what? Milk and honey. Milk and honey. honey. Amen? And so, you know, that... If you look at the book of Job, for example, as well, Job gave to those who were in need, but he also didn't have a problem with his children when they had a feast, right? So it's not purely Amen. about having, it's about what do you do with what you have. Um, and so, yes. and, and this is an important concept as well, because if you think about it, um, on the, again, the flip side of this commandment teaches us that it's okay to have things and it's okay to enjoy the things that God has blessed you with, right? Because think about it. What he's saying here right. is thou shalt not steal, right? You shouldn't take what is not yours. So obviously the other side Amen. of that coin tells us that it's important to allow somebody to enjoy the things that God has blessed them with. Amen. Huh? Good so here's here's how I'd like to wrap up this, this section of it, at least. Um, there is a, a quote from a, a guy named R. Kent Hughes. He says, every time I give, I declare that money does not control me. Perpetual generosity is a perpetual um, de, uh, de-deification of money, right? So what he's saying here is he knows that God has blessed him to give and to be able to do, and every time he gives... He knows that he's saying that ultimately to God and saying to himself that, you know, thank the Lord for the money that you've given me. Thank the God for what I have. But I'm also saying by giving that God does not control or that uh, money does not control me, that money is not my God. Amen. 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 Now, we've talked about stealing from men. But before we go forward, we know we got to talk at least a little bit about stealing from God. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
But I mean, we know men would steal from men, but would would a man steal from God? Would would a man rob God? That's right. Glory. Would somebody like to have a comment on that one? Somebody uh, say your name and I'll, we'll call on you. But you ever want to have a comment on that? <laughs> Go ahead, old <laughs> Malachi, Malachi 3, verse number 8. It says, will a man rob God? <laughs> That's exactly <Amen>. right. <laughs> will a man rob God? I'm going to give him a in the class. <laughs> Yet we have robbed, it says, yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Amen. Mm-hmm. Ye are cursed with a curse, Amen. for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. It says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Somebody should be able to say amen. 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 You you know, I love that song, right? Well, the first songs I learned as a child was that very simple song. You can't beat God's giving. Beat God's giving. No matter how you try, right? The more yeah. you give, the more he gives to you. Just keep on giving because you know it's really true. You can't be mm-hmm. God's giving. Okay. And, and what, I think is, what I think is amazing about Malachi 3 and 8 all the way down to verse number 10 there is it's a, I mean, it's a complete mm-hmm. 180, right? I mean, you go from a situation mm-hmm. of... If you rob God, you are cursed with a curse, right? All the way to the flip side of that, if you give God what he asks you, right? Just give him what he's asking yeah. for. Then he says he will give you more than you will ever have room to receive. Ah, glory. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Glory, God. Amen. Amen. Um, there is a quote uh, by a uh, famous um, investor, uh, you probably know him. His name is Robert Kiyosaki. I don't know if he's ever, ever heard of him before, but he wrote a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, but I, I love this quote from Robert Kiyosaki. He says, as far as tithing goes, we continue to donate a large percentage to charitable organizations. It's important to give. As my very religious friend says, God does not need to receive, but humans need to give. Also, the reason we give is because tithing is our way of paying our partner, God. God is the best business partner that I've ever had. He asked for 10% and he lets me keep the other 90%. He said, you know what happens if you stop paying your partners? They stop working with you. That's why we tithe. (laughs) Okay. You know, I just thought it was interesting, right? I, I thought it was a funny quote, but <laughs> but it's also interesting because I think to some extent he's got it right, right? That God asked for 10%, you know, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, right? But he, he gives us 90 and he asks for 10. Um, you know, one of the other things he said specifically, even for himself, he said as, as he was beginning to amass his fortune, he said one of the things that drove him to become rich and one of the things that drove him to become wealthy was that he always aspired to be the biggest donor in his church, right? I mean, that's that's a big deal, right? To be able to say to yourself, Lord, if you bless me with this, I'm going to make sure that I give you back what you've asked for and then some. Yeah. Amen. You know, Pastor. Yeah. Um, okay. I, it's the brown. You know, it, 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 God is so good. Because what if he had to ask for the ninety percent and you take the ten percent? Right. So he just asked for the ten percent. Right. You know, that's just awesome. Amen. Ten percent, and then you don't want to pay ten percent. They don't want to pay ten percent. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and here's what I say now: I, I'm not going to act uh, holier than anybody else. There was a time where I didn't get this. I didn't understand it, right? I'm not going to say I've always been perfect or I've always been saved. But when I figured it out, 
I realized that, I mean, God is awesome and he will show up and he will show out in your life. If you just lean and depend on him, I mean, he will do extraordinary Amen. things for you. And so I would just encourage everybody, if you haven't tried him, try him. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Very quickly here, uh, I didn't realize how we were running out of time here, but there's one last point I want to make. One last point I want to make here, and I think this is one that's very, very important. I think especially to everybody we have on the phone, everybody I think who's connected here. Um, one of the things that we maybe don't capture, or maybe did not know about this particular commandment is uh, is what it, what it tells us in Exodus uh, chapter number 21. So go to Exodus chapter 21, and we'll, we'll kind of get our last point in here for the evening. But Exodus chapter 21, we want to look at, uh, let me see here. I think we want verse number 16. Let me see, should make sure I can find it himself. Right, so of course, my computer actually wants to act like a little silly now, but we'll find on the phone. Don't want to give you the wrong verse. Exodus 21. Wow. Yeah, there we go. 21 and what? Exodus 21 and 16. 21 and 16. Yes, yeah, 21 and 16. 21 and what? Uh, 21 and 16. Exodus 21 and 16. It says in Exodus 21 and 16, And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or he, uh, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So I'm going to ask you, what does this mean? Anybody want to just step on on faith and, and tell me what you think that, that that verse is telling us? How does that apply to our modern times? It's not my favorite. Amen. Somebody got it. Somebody got it. Absolutely. What about you? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's slavery, right? It says, whoever steals a man yeah. and sells him, and anyone found in possession of him, shall be put to death. Did you know that this commandment completely and utterly 100% outlaws the slavery that happened in America? Did you know that? Say that again. This commandment, this 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 uh, eighth commandment, it completely outlaws the slavery that happened here in America. According to God, as far as God's law, it was not lawful, not right, and should never have happened. It says here, listen, whoever steals a man and sells him and anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death. If you remember now, up until this point, when we've been looking at the at this thou shalt not steal, and we've been looking at the issues and the and the um, the consequences, right, of stealing, outside of I broke into your house at night and you didn't know what I was there for and you were protecting your family and you killed me. Outside of that, there really aren't any command or any uh, um, uh, consequences for stealing that would say that I should die except this one. Mm -hmm. If you steal a person, right? And so here's what I'm saying. Right. Here's what I'm saying. You remember right. now slavery, right? Slavery in this country. What happened was, uh, the, you know, you had people who were coming from other countries who would go to Africa, right? Who would literally uh -huh. take people from Africa, right? Um, and if not take them directly, they would take them from somebody else who's already taken them, right? But they would take them or they would, uh, they either would steal them themselves or they'd get them off or buy them off of somebody who had already taken them as a slave, right? Or taken them as a, as a, uh, a prisoner of some kind, right? And so what this is saying here is whoever actually steals him or who sells him or who's found in possession of him 
has committed a sin that's bad enough as far as God is concerned to be put to death. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. okay. Hello? Yeah, yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah, we did. Okay. Um, is this the same thing as human sex trafficking when, like, um, that's correct. The young ladies are being abducted off of the street corners and sold into other countries. That is correct. Upon sex and different stuff like that. Absolutely. It's exactly right. Yep. It applies to that as well. Exactly right. And pass. Uh-huh. And pass. Yes, sir. Go for it. Pass. Yes, sir. We got you. You can have my two. Uh-huh. The same, the same thing happened to Joseph when the right. brother sold him. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the same thing. The brothers, the brothers got together and sold him. Yep, and went back to the daddy with a lie. Yep. Amen. So, my, uh, what I want to, the main point I want to so make I with this. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so this, this is in uh, in the Old Testament. So it's talking about the law, right? Mm-hmm. These six, these the law and the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. So, how do you um, explain that in the New? Well, if you turn to Matthew chapter five, what? Matthew chapter number mm-hmm. five, mm-hmm. and read verse seventeen and eighteen, I believe. I'm I'm coming off the top of my head here, but I think that's right. Yeah, Matthew five seventeen and eighteen. When, when you get to it, go ahead and read it for us. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophet. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. You say Matthew 5? Yeah, that's right. Matthew 5. That's right. <laughs> 17 and 18. Chapter 17? No, Matthew chapter 5. Oh. Yeah, verse number 17 and 18. Okay. Amen. Did everybody get All that? Right. So it says Matthew chapter five verse seventeen eighteen. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. That's what we're that's what we're studying right now, right? Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass uh, shall till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Amen. Uh, so what Jesus is ultimately saying here is that. I, 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 oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I just wanted to know. I wanted to know more about this when you get into the New Testament. Absolutely, but and so place, yeah, has. and that's the connection, right? That's the connection. You see, what what tends to happen sometimes right. is sometimes people will look at Jesus' ministry, which was three years, right? And they'll say, well, he didn't deal with this issue or that issue. He didn't deal with this part of law or that part of law. In his first uh, sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, right, where he stood up and he gave that first sermon, he dealt with everything with that statement. He's saying that he is not having the law pass away. The moral law of God has not changed and it will never change until it's no longer needed, right? Until we get to the place where we're all perfect, right? And we're we're, we're with him in heaven, right? I saw a new heaven and new earth. Uh Everybody with me? Because the uh-huh. old heaven, the old earth, everything had passed away and God has made everything new, right? He's saying until that right. point where Amen. we no longer need the moral law of God, the moral law of God is not going anywhere. And so that is connected directly to what we've read and what we've been studying over these last few weeks with these Ten Commandments. Um, certainly this is not all of the moral law of God, but this takes care of a very good summary Right of the moral law of God, and that's why we've been going through it, is because we want to understand exactly what he was saying in verses 17 and 18 of Matthew chapter number 5. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Absolutely. Good question, by the way. Thank you. Now, 
Alistair. Yes, go for it. Um, when Jesus Jesus covered everything old and new. Mm-hmm. When, when Jesus came to the world, went out to the world, he covered everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. He didn't miss nothing. Amen. He covered it all. And he put it in red writing, he covered it all. Amen. Amen. We hear you, Doug. We're under grace now. We're under grace, right? Mm-hmm. We are under grace. So what is the... So that, that's a good question. Now, that's a good comment. So what is the, the value of the law? What is the value of the law? Since we're under grace now, right, why do we need to study the law? What's the point? Well, the law is holy. Mm-hmm. And it shows you your shortcomings. coming. There it is. Amen. And Jesus, yeah, and Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. Mm-hmm. And when you abide in Jesus, then that Jesus is perfect, and you be in perfection. Amen. Because Jesus is perfect. Amen. Exactly right. It's so, not us. It's us in in Jesus. Because Jesus and our the hours be changed, and it's come with trust. It come with trust, and I want to say that by that tide and too tide and also lead us and guide us and help and power us. To trust in what the Word of God is saying. Mm-hmm. Amen. Very good. Amen. You know, when we understand, when we understand the law of God, we understand God Himself. I mean, the moral, the moral law of God really gives us a a good view into the the personality of God and what He finds important, right? And so that's the reason that we have to make sure we understand what the law of God says. It helps us to understand how we should live. And it also helps us understand that we're going to fall short, right? And it's you know, and when we fall short, then praise the Lord, He is just and He is faithful to forgive us. Thank God He is, because Amen. because as you go through these Ten Commandments, you know, Amen. and I guarantee you, if you are open, if you are reading these things with an open heart, you will not get past Commandment Number One before you realize that you failed. Amen. 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 So we thank the Lord that we, we're getting now close to 10, right? We're on about to be on nine now next week, getting close to it. And we know that there is a whole bunch of places that we have messed up. But thank the Lord that we do have grace and that his grace is sufficient. Amen. 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 Okay. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Let, last, last piece mm-hmm. here. Oh, go ahead. Tell me I have one more question. Mm-hmm. All right. Last piece here. And then we're going to close it up. If everybody would just turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter number 1. I just want to make one last point about this concept of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. That's 1 Timothy chapter number 1. I want to make one last point here about this uh, this concept of slavery. And just show you, you know, again, New Testament wise, um, the importance of this concept and just how much God does not like it. So 1 Timothy chapter number 1, and we're going to look at verses 9 uh, and 10. So this is an interesting portion of Scripture. It's an interesting portion of Scripture because what Paul is doing here is he's instructing Timothy, right? And as he gets to verse number 9, Uh, We'll read through it, and I'll kind of go back and show you sort of where his mind was going with this. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, it says in verse number 9, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, uh, uh, for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, right? And so he's talking to Timothy here, and he's helping him to understand uh, the way that you use the word of God, and the way that you help people to see the issues that they have, and the way that you can use that that um, uh, uh, word of God to uh, to really correct and you know set people straight. And what he's saying here is very interesting. Because he starts talking about the word of God, right? And he starts specifically talking about the law of God. So when it says here in verse number nine, knowing this, that the law is not made for righteous men, but 
for the lawlessness and disobe lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and profane. And then look at what it says here for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. So that tells me that if you think about that, that's that's really commandment number four, right? From commandment number four, commandment number number five, uh, honor your mother and your father, and thou shalt not kill. Amen. Amen. And then he goes on to say, uh, would it be right? Would it be right to think that if it wasn't from the law, you would know right from wrong? Amen. Amen. Very good. Amen. And so, and so it goes on to say not only uh, fathers and, and uh, murders of fathers, murders of mothers, then it says for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. And so that tells you there, if you look at that, that's, that's really commandment number six, right? Thou shalt not commit adultery, because that speaks to all kinds of sexual sin. It then goes on to say uh, for men stealers. So, so you stop and you say to yourself, now we've gotten to verse number uh, oh, we got to, to number six, right? And then we're going on to saying um, uh, for, uh, well, I'm sorry, we got all the way down to thou shalt not commit adultery. And then when he gets to the place of thou shalt not steal, right? When he gets to the place of thou shalt not steal, what he says here is men stealers. And so it's interesting to me that he goes and he started laying out, you know, these different sort of parts of the commandments. And I, I imagine that, you know, from the, from the movement of the Holy Spirit in his mind and from the way he'd studied the commandments for years, right? They probably just kind of rolled right off his tongue. But it's interesting to me that when he gets to thou shalt not steal, he specifically says men stealers. Y'all see that? Not just any stealers and not just any thieves, but specifically those who would put somebody in slavery. He calls them out here. So I'm saying all that to say that there is a direct connection, right, between uh, what we see in the Old Testament and what we see in those Ten Commandments and what's being taught in the New Testament, not just from what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, but also what Paul is even saying here in 1 Timothy, right? That, you know, he, look, listen, that God is not playing around. And when it comes down to believing that you can steal a man and you can own a man, right, that, that one man can own another man and treat him, you know, like any kind of way, treat him like a dog, right, that God is not happy with that. And I, I want to make that point because for years, unfortunately, people bent and twisted the word of God to make it sound as if uh, the slavery that was going on in this country was fine and that God was cool with it. God was not cool with it. And what we have to see today, by the way, is uh, the sin, that sin that ultimately was committed with that. Guess what? We're still living through that today, right? There's still issues of racism and, and uh, even classism, right? But especially racism in this country um, that we're still dealing with today. People are still fighting each other. People are still angry with each other. People are still killing one another. So ultimately, I'm just trying to say here that, you know, Amen. sin, we don't sin in a vacuum. And it's not a situation where you sin and then you let sin run rampant. It just kind of just goes away. You know, we in this country, we 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 are still dealing with the price of having slavery in this country. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, yep, sir. Go for it. And also, you could steal another way, too. Uh, false prophets steal a man an opportunity to get saved and to know God. Amen. That's right. By uh, saying the wrong thing, you know it's not truthful. That's right. You know it's not true, but saying it, so this don't give a person an opportunity to believe what they're saying. Because they're going to believe what they're saying is right. And what they're saying is wrong. So they're lost. You know, you got somebody lost in the mix by not telling the truth. So you're stealing them the opportunity to be a child of God. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. true child of God, should I say. Yep. 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 I mean, I, I think so that's some right. Some people think you just steal the loaf of bread to steal money. That's stealing. No, it's a lot of what you can steal now besides 
Besides that, when it comes to the Lord, you're not being faithful or doing what you're supposed to do for the Lord is concerned. Yep. I mean, if you think about it, right? The, the our, our biggest problem, by the way, is that uh, you know, man sinned in the garden, right? What ultimately uh, what, what, what was the that's what was where the, Rome came out. Rome. Right in Rome. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Because what was the and what was the problem, right? God said, don't take that one. <laughs> right? He said, you can have anything you right. want in this place except for that tree. So when Adam and Eve decided that they were going to take from the tree that God told them not to take from, what did they do? They put that right there and took that tree and disobeyed. Absolutely. And, and and didn't they essentially, essentially, didn't they steal from God? Yeah. I mean, God said, you cannot have that one. Right? So you can have, you're free to, feel free to have whatever, you, but you cannot have that one. And they decided they were going to take what they should not take. That's right. Amen. Amen. So when we look at this thing of, of thou shalt not steal, I mean, it's, it's deep. And we didn't even really get to everything I wanted yeah, to get man. to, but we got to get we got to get to the next one. <laughs> but there's there's more. There, I mean, just as Deke said, there's more, and then um, you know there are ways. Even when the, you know the devil himself, right? And I was talking. I think it was Sister English was talking to me about this, and you know the devil himself will do his best to steal your joy. You know that he'll try to steal your joy. Right. He'll try to steal your peace. Right? He will throw mm-hmm. whatever he can in your way. Yeah. To try and take those oh, yeah. things that God has blessed you with, and and so we have to understand. I mean, this this deal about stealing it's it's deep, and there's a lot to it. Amen. Good word. Good lesson. Amen. Well, look, we really appreciate everybody. We we got to wrap it up. Uh, y'all know I could just keep on going all night here, but we got to wrap it up. Um, thank you for everybody who who jumped on. Thank you for everybody who participated. Um, I think we pretty much have taken care, I believe, of of any uh, announcements that we had. Let's not forget that again on Saturday, uh, you know, we're going to be here up at the church Saturday morning at ten o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a uh, a drive up service, you know, and and so I encourage everybody to come on. And um, again, you can come on in your cars, and we're going to have a little bit of music and a little bit of prayer, some praise and some worship, and you know, we're going to have a few words from from yours truly and. And we're going to keep on rolling after that. We won't be here for too long, but we are going to bless the Lord with our time. And and I I think I'll enjoy getting a chance to see a lot of people who I probably haven't had a chance to see in a while. So, That's enough. Yes, sir. That's a big alarm. Because I understand you said you're going to have both vans running. Yes, yes. We'd like to have both vans running. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get them ready now. That's what I want to know. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Absolutely, Deke. Thank you. All right. Well, look, if there's nothing else that we need to take care of on tonight, uh, Deacon Lawrence, if you don't mind, go ahead and pray us out, please. Deacon Lawrence, you there? Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Go ahead and pray us out. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come thanking you, Lord, for what you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Lord, we thank you for bringing this group back together one more time. Lord, we thank you for the word that we heard tonight. Father, as we heard this word, Father, I ask you let it be hidden in our hearts, Lord, to go out in the world to help save some lost souls. Lord, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the uh, leader that pronounced the word, Lord. Lord, we just thank for everybody that was in this meeting that to, get, to listen at the word. Lord, we thank you for everything that's been done. Lord, as we hold this meeting out, Lord, let us all leave with a good, clear heart. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. See you Saturday. God bless. Enjoy. God bless. Have a good night. Amen. You too. Love you all. Love you too. Love you all. Love you all. Much love. Love you too.
Oh. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.